thank you, and thank you for the, for the introduction. Um, today I'm going to talk about a fairly recent project, which we called XWEC. Uh, I will soon understand why. And it's mostly talk about very weird data structure for geospatial data and a way how we implemented it with, with Python on top of X-Array. Uh, and the data structure is called vector data cubes and we see it as something that lives in between geospatial raster data and I will show an example how that looks like and geospatial vector data and I will also show what do I mean by that. Uh, so what are spatial data? I may try to zoom in. Uh, with vector data, we are essentially dealing with points, with lines, and with areas. So you have your specific coordinates, specific vertices, each, let's say, latitude, longitude, encoded, and point is easy. It's just a one spot on the ground. Line is something like a street, it could be a flight path, an area that would be, for example, an area of a country or some landmass. And those are very precisely defined as, as vector data, and each of them is kind of uniquely defined, independent of every other geometry in, in, in your data structure. Uh, the other side of the geospatial world are raster data, and that's essentially a NumPy array with values. So the point would be just a single, just a single cell uh, highlighted with a value. Line would be something like this. So you represent the line as a contiguous series of of your cells, and the area is, is extension of that. Uh, in Python, uh, we skip this. Uh, raster data are very often uh, handled by a library called X-Array, which is built on top of uh, NumPy mostly. And with one example from X-Array tutorial, I can show you how that looks like. Uh, so what you get uh, when you load a data set, because that's one of the core structures, second one is data array, so data set is like a bigger, bigger part. Uh, we do have uh, dimensions, so we have longitude with latitude. We have some level of, of height in this case of, of measurement, and we have uh, some time dimension here. And for every single of them, we have an array. This is geopotential. You have some information about how, how it's measured, and it's a NumPy array with plenty of values. Uh, so this is how the data structure looks like, usually. Under the hood, it's essentially a set of NumPy and the arrays uh, aligned with pandas indices. So you have your NumPy array you are aware of, you know. You have your pandas index you also know, and this kind of very smartly combines it together. And this is how one of the months and one of the levels would look like on this specific data set. So we see that we have the data covering the whole globe. You can slightly sense the, the continents in here. And yeah, so this is geopotential. I don't know what it exactly means. That's far from my expertise. I'm talking about the data structures here, not exactly about the, the measurements. Uh, vector data are very different. Uh, we use GeoPandas library. Uh, we import GeoPandas as GPD usually. It's an extension of Pandas. And what you get when you read vector data set uh, is your traditional Pandas data frame with special column uh, with uh, geometries. So in this case, we have polygons here. And we can look how that looks on the map. So in here, we have counties of, of, of United States. And each polygon is represented as a one row, and it has all its col all columns, so you have always data linked to different polygons. Uh, however, you are limited to pen pandas data structure in here. So in case you need to do some multi-dimensional data sets that are actually linked to geometries and not to a raster cells, as normally we do with with a text array, you're in trouble. 
because there, there's no smart way of doing that until expect came and until some changes in XRA actually happened. So a typical data cube is a raster data cube. That's X-ray data array, which is usually in geospatial world indexed by X and Y or latitude and longitude. Uh, on the contrary, vector data cube is an ND array where at least one dimension is indexed by an array of vector geometries. So instead of coordinates, uh, we have an array of vector geometries as an index. Uh, which is again slightly different from what GeoPandas is doing, where index is traditional pandas index and geometries are just one column. In here, we kind of switch it and we use geometries as an index. We are currently at the state of XVEC 0.1, so it all starts as proof of, proof of a concept, uh, how we, whether, we, whether we actually can do it with current uh, situation on X-Array and Shapelay, which are the two libraries that are kind of combined together in here. And we were essentially trying to mimic what an R package uh, stars in, in our spatial world is, is already doing. So let me, let me walk you through the data structure itself. So the simplest data array, which can be considered a vector data queue, vector data array, would be just an array of values indexed by an array of geometries, as simple as that. Uh, so we have loaded already our counties, that was the GeoPandas geodata frame with US counties and we had all those columns. And we can create a very simple uh, data array where we take one of the columns, for example population per, per county from the year 1960, and we can uh, use the geometry column as coordinates. In this case, the tire looks like this. We have our values in here. We have our counties in here as polygons. Uh, right now, the index is uh, pandas index, and it doesn't give us any special support. However, when we import XWEC, we get access to an uh, X-ray accessor, and we are able to use it to use that uh, county uh, index and convert it to a geometry index using set geometry indexes. And we also specify the CRS, which is coordinate reference system that tells us what the actual numbers in those coordinates of those individual points on, on our polygons actually mean on ground, because that's not always latitude, longitude. It can be some local, local, local projection system. And when we look at the index, we see that the counter is no longer a pandas index, uh, but it's a geometry index with a specific uh, projection. In this case, it actually is a latitude and longitude. Uh, but such a simple uh, data array doesn't really make sense to use. You can easily use GeoPandas GeoData frame for the same thing because you are limited to two dimensions and it would be much easier, much more comfortable for you. So a bit more, more meaningful example uh, would be including time dimension in here. So we still use our counties example, and uh, we take a population for four different uh, periods. So we wanna uh, now index the data array based on geometry as before, but also by time. So we can see that we have two dimensions in here. And we already set the, the, the geometry index directly in here. So the, the data structure now looks like this. Uh, we have 2D uh, NumPy array holding all the values. And the NumPy array is indexed by county and by year, where county are our geometries and year are our integer values representing different years. This is still fairly simple. And it gets more interesting when we get to uh, more dimensions in our data set. Uh, so we can, we can go directly to the X-ray data set from data array. I'm still making noise here, sorry. Uh, which means that we will include other variables. So right now we had only population, so it was one NumPy array. But we can also include other uh, information we had in our original data frame. So we can work with population, do the same thing as before, but also unemployment data, divorce data, age data, 
and we have a data set uh, indexed by two dimensions, but that itself has four different uh, variables inside. So this is sort of how it looks like. And if you, if you look at indexes, one of them is pandas index, which is the X-ray default, and the second one is geometry index. Uh, you can skip this. So why, why are we doing this? What, what, is, what is the purpose of indexing by something like geometry? Um, it allows us to work with the data uh, using spatial operations, using spatially enabled indexing and selecting and using more, more, more advanced spatial operations directly on the index of X-ray X -ray data set. So we can uh, take another example. We will use a yellow taxi trip data as a data cube. So we will have in here a data set representing uh, individual trips in New York for I think one month or for 40 days of, of, of some arbitrary, arbitrary uh, time series. And we have every, for every uh, trip, we know payment type, we know the date, we know the hour, we know origin and destination, where origin and destinations are uh, polygons. So you know that our origins and destination looks like this. So we have individual zones in, in New York and each trip starts at one of these and ends at one of these. So that's a lot, a lot of dimensions to work with. And it would be very inefficient to create a data frame like, like this, because Pandas multi-index can uh, get you only as, as, as far as it can. And it's useful to create multi-dimensional array like, like X-array but if you are starting and, and ending at geometries, normally you would have to use, uh, let's say, integer index for a geometry and, and store geometry somewhere else and keep those two in sync, which can be troublesome. Uh, so easy uh, example of, of indexing by geometry is using geometry as a label. So we specify that we want only uh, two destinations using the specific two geometries. This is the, exactly the same case as you would use with normal X-ray. Uh, now we see that we have only two destinations, so our dimensionality is kind of reduced. Uh, but interesting bits are, are, are starting right now. We can start doing the nearest join. Uh, you know that, you may know that X-ray can do nearest, for example, based on time. But with uh, XWEC and, and, and uh, data cubes, indexed by geometry, you can do the nearest selection according to space. So you select the nearest point in space. So we have two points for origin, two points for destination, some subset of, of, of date and time, and we are interested in the nearest locations, and this is our final, final, final data set. It was very simple to, to get the nearest, uh, nearest join like this. Um, we can also extend the, the spatial queries from nearest to something else. Uh, if you use scalar geometry, like a single, single geometry, we can uh, find intersections. So we can define a box, uh, like a rectangle on, on, on top of New York, of, of part of it, and we look what is intersecting it. And we see that since we were looking at, uh, at origin only, uh, we have all trips that are starting within one of the origin, origin locations intersecting our specific location of interest. It could be a neighborhood, it could be something, something you, are, you may be interested in from a business perspective, like a vicinity of, of a shop you are, you are trying to analyze. And this is how the subset would actually look like. So you see that <coughs> we created a box which was something like this around in here. You can also do that in an array of geometries, not only with individual geometries like, 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 the, like the polygon. Uh, 
and you can also use uh, abilities of uh, spatial indexing in, in Shapely because Shapely is a library that uh, is uh, taking care of, of geometries we are using in here and we are using all these capabilities we can uh, use it to do all these spatial space indexes which means that we can also specify that we want only uh, origins that are within our geometries so we would get only two of these based on those geometries before. Uh, <coughs> you can also specify whether you want to get all hits because in some cases you may get the same origin location as, a, as an answer for the predicate for the check whether something is within something else for the first one as well for the second one. Uh, in, in some cases it's in, in, important, in other cases you may want to filter that, so you can do it directly specifying unique keyword in here. And it, uh, or you can also uh, specify everything which is within certain distance around, around points. So let's say 5,000, I think this is feed because I think that the data set is actually in feed. Again, we have some certain subsets of the, of the data set. But, but what's interesting and important is that we always, no matter which uh, operation we do, we always keep the full dimensionality and we always keep all the indices that, that we, the original data structure had. So we are not reducing anything uh, on the data structure side. I already mentioned that when you are creating the, the, the index, we are assigning projection. Uh, this is probably way too technical, but we are borrowing what GeoPandas is using uh, for, for projection management, and we are applying exactly the same thing on, on XWAC, so you can see that there is specific uh, projection. This is the code which encodes how all the, the, the values should be uh, interpreted in the end. And this is the detail of the, of the actual projection of the data set. So we see that it's actually indeed in, in, in feed. I can skip this. You can skip this as well and this as well. Uh, the issue with vector data cubes is that it's not necessarily standardized uh, data structure, which means that it's currently pretty hard to serialize it, to save it to a disk. There is some work ongoing uh, across different languages. We are trying to find a standard that is able to do this uh, without limiting how many dimensions can be actually indexed, uh, but you will probably find yourself in a need to convert the data cube once you analyze it to, 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 to add and you want to save it to uh, something like GeoPanda GeoData Frame again. Uh, so if we get another data set as an example, this is our traffic counts uh, from Chicago. So we again have uh, origin destination. We have trips between these, these polygons uh, uh, with information on the mode of transport, with information on time, date and time, uh, so we have a couple of dimensions in here. We're starting and ending at these neighborhoods. I think I think this is officially called communities for some reason. So XVEC has two different ways of, of, of converting stuff to GeoPandas, mimicking what X-Ray is doing with pandas directly. Uh, so if we select a subset as a slice of the, of the data array, we can uh, convert it to GeoData frame, which in this case gives us the origin, the destination uh, data, and the subset of what we are interested in. Uh, if you try to do the same with to GeoPandas instead of to GeoData frame, it currently raises a value error because uh, following the X-Array logic, we would have to index the array on both sides, both co index and columns using geometry, which is not supported on GeoPanda's side and will probably never be. So we need to get some smarter subsets of this. Uh, I'm going to skip this and talk about how can we actually represent multidimensional uh, cube 
within two dimensions because we are we have two different options. One is something which is called which is called long form, and one is something which is called a wide form. So if you use the demographic data of U.S. counties we used before, it looks something like this. Uh, the long form means that in the end you get a very, very long data frame. Uh, and you will see certain levels of repetition. So we have a uh, year, and for every year we have all our, all our, our data per individual county. And the long form data frame gives you uh, a data frame indexed by years, but you will see that this polygon, this polygon, this polygon, and this polygon are actually equal. It's the same polygon, there's duplication, and we cannot really avoid it when we want to do the long form, because if we have more than one dimension in, in our vector data cube, something needs to repeat. And in our case, Years are repeating again, 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 and again for every county. Within this, is, counties are repeating. There is a lot of repetition. We don't have any rep repetition on the value side, but we do have a lot of repetition on what used to be an index. White form slightly eliminates this because it ensures that we have every polygon only once in the data frame. But you will start to see that the columns are now indexed as pandas multi-index, and you have repetition in here. And this uh, data frame can become really, really, really wide. And if you have more than, let's say, two, maybe three dimensions, it can get really, really messy, and you really don't want to work with something like that. Uh, so yeah, there are still limitations in, in, in kind of converting from one to the other, especially if you want to save stuff and read it, let's say, with different language or on different location afterwards. Yes, yeah, so there is just my disclaimer that uh, even though we are trying to mimic what X-Ray is currently doing as much as we can, there are some differences because geometries just are limiting what we can do in certain, certain cases. Uh, the final example I will show is probably the most useful currently, and that's a way of extracting point data from geospatial raster into a, a vector data cube that preserves complete uh, multidimensionality of the original raster. So we had that uh, example with the world data of uh, some geopotential, as I showed before, I think it was your potential. Can't see anything here. Really. Yep. So we have we have a map of the world which looks something like this. And we are interested in values for specific locations. But what I'm showing in here is, is, is a slice for only one month and only one level. But I would like to know every, everything I have in this in this data array for that specific location. Let's say Prague. Uh, so we can use the extract points method, where we specify shapely points. Shapely again is, is, is dealing with our geometries. So we have our point locations. I have created just random points, uh, but not random. Uh, a, a grid of points uh, spanning across the world. And we can just easily extract those, uh, specifying that for x coordinates of our points, the, the linked dimension in the original uh, DS data set is longitude and for Y is latitude. And in the end we get the extracted data set, which is still data set, exactly as the original one was. But right now it's indexed by geometry on top of whatever it was indexed before. And it contains only subset based on the, the, the join. Uh, we can skip this and get to the map like this because in here we see what ex exactly is the result. So we were able to get the information for every point and we see that for every point we have uh, the value, val values you may be interested in and even here I'm only on, on, on slicing only. So this is a typical use case where you would use vector data in real life you have your data as 
multi-dimensional raster array, and you want to get it to points, you want to get it to for countries, you want to get it based on cities, based on, based on continents, whatever you are really interested in. Kind of aggregation method. Uh, you can use shape it directly for geometric operations. So if you want to, for example, understand the area of every of the polygons, you can directly call Shapely on this because Shapely is working on top of NumPy arrays. X array is supporting every NumPy ufunc. So this is this is very straightforward to work with. Uh, we depend on fairly recent versions of both X-Ray and Shapely because uh, older versions just didn't support custom indexes on X-Ray and all the versions of Shapely are not, can, cannot be used as an index because they are not hashable. So this is all depending on very, very recent versions of stuff. And if you are interested in more, go to the documentation of read the docs, uh, most of the code I was showing is actually taken directly from the documentation, so you will see everything in there with, with, with more explanation that I gave you today. And uh, that's me, thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Martin. Do we have any questions? We have a microphone there in case someone wants to ask something, don't be shy. No, no questions so far? And the other one, yes. Hello. Um, how is it with data larger than memory? Um, uh, for example, when uh, you have uh, millions of, uh, of polygons and you want to load only to memory those that are actually needed for your spatial operation, uh, do you support chunk data or could it be supported so that um, the polygons uh, uh, the close together in, in spatial dimensions are also close together on disk? At the moment, it is not supported. Uh, it's actually a pretty complicated problem to do these kind of things within the geospatial world. Uh, we are trying to implement um, out-of-core geospatial processing using Dusk GeoPandas, on, which is kind of a side of this. And it's just not straightforward because you want to make sure that everything is kind of nicely or, uh, organized in space and on me in memory and on disk, and that's usually a very, very painful experience. So right now we do not support this. I assume that if you have a dusk array within your X-ray data array, so if the out of core is not the index, not the geometries, but the actual values, you should be able to work with it. I haven't tested that, but I don't see a reason why this shouldn't work. Equally, you should be able to work with dusk arrays backed by sparse arrays. Yeah, so, because the, the, mm, the sparse part is data, not the index. So, yeah, to a degree you may find way around it, but like native support that everything you would expect with uh, traditional X-ray, Backed by Dusk, uh, it's, it's not necessarily supported right now. It's on the it's on, on the roadmap. Thanks. Any other question? If not, this thanks Martin again. And remember, now we have a coffee break.